Kuzu Zangbo, and welcome to Bhutan e-learning program. I am Mikmat Singh, teacher from Jishong Central School. This economics lesson is intended for key stages four and five, the class ranging from nine to 12. Today in this lesson, I will be taking you through the price elasticity of demand. And the lesson objectives are, by the end of the lesson, you should be able to define what is price, what is elasticity of demand. You should be able to examine the different elasticities of demand. You should be able to explain how demand for a commodity responds to the price of a commodity. You should be able to explain different degrees of price elasticity of demand using diagram. And you should be able to interpret all the numerical values of elasticity of demand. So before going into the main topic that is elasticity of demand, let us recollect some of the important lessons that we have learned in the previous class. Now, you might have learned about law of demand. What law of demand states now? Law of demand states that all other factors affecting demand remaining constant, if only the price of the commodity increases, then the quantity demanded will decrease. And if the price of the commodity increases, then the quantity demanded will decrease. And you have also learned about the factors affecting demand or the determinants of demand. From that factors affecting demand, we will try to recollect three important lessons. First one is price. When the price increases, quantity demanded will decrease. Second one is income. And in, under the, the income of the consumer, we have three types of goods. First one is normal goods. For normal goods, when the income of the consumer increases, quantity demanded will also increase. For informal, inferior goods, if the income of the consumer increases, quantity demanded will decrease because the consumer will try to shift towards superior goods. And third factor is the price of the related goods. Here we have two types of goods. First one is substitute goods. The best example can be the tea and coffee. Now, if the price of tea increases, what will happen to the demand for coffee? If the price of coffee increases, what will happen to the demand for the tea? So now, so we have learned all these things, but we have not looked into by what degree the demand for the commodity will change because of the factors affecting demand. So elasticity of demand is, elasticity of demand refers to the degree of responsiveness or sensitiveness of quantity demanded of a commodity to change in any of its determinants like price of a commodity, income of the consumer, and price of the related goods. That means price elasticity of demand will show you how much quantity demanded will change due to change in its determinants. For example, if there is change in price of the commodity by 10%, by what degree the quantity demanded will change? This we will be studying in elasticity of demand. So now, under the elasticity of demand, we have three different types of elasticity of demand. First one is price elasticity of demand. Second one is income elasticity of demand. And the third one is cross elasticity of demand. So now, we will be defining all these three different types of elasticity of demand. And 
In this lesson, we will be focusing more on the price elasticity of demand. The first one is the price elasticity of demand. Here, the key word is price and the elasticity. So, elasticity means the variation or degree of change. So, now here, the key word is price of the commodity. So, it is the degree of responsiveness of a quantity demanded for a commodity in response to change in its price, which means how quantity demanded will change because of the change in price of the commodity. By what degree the quantity demanded will change because of change in the price of a commodity. EP here refers to price elasticity of demand and price elasticity of demand is percentage change in quantity demanded by two percentage change in the price of the commodity. So now here, if you try to elaborate this uh, uh, ratio, then EP refers to the price elasticity of demand. Then we have percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price of a commodity. So now again, if you try to elaborate this one, so percentage, we can cancel it. So now change in quantity demanded is new quantity divided by initial uh, minus initial quantity. New quantity minus initial quantity divided by initial quantity divided by new price minus initial price divided by initial price. So now here again Q1 minus Q divided by Q and then mathematically you will have to reciprocal the denominator. So P divided by P1 minus P and it can be also written as new quantity minus the initial quantity can be referred as change in quantity demanded divided by initial quantity multiplied by initial price divided by change in price. So, this becomes your formula to calculate price elasticity of demand. And next one is the income elasticity of demand. Here, key word is income and the elasticity. The degree of responsiveness of a quantity demanded of a commodity to the change in the income of the consumer is known as income elasticity of demand. It can be again measured as a ratio of change in the per, uh, percentage change in quantity demanded to the percentage change in income of the consumer and it can be represented here EY price in economics is represented by P and income is represented by Y. That's why EY is referred here as income elasticity. So now income elasticity is ratio of percentage change in quantity demanded to percentage change in income of the consumer. Now, third one is cross elasticity of demand. Now, here the key word is price of a related goods. So, cross elasticity of demand refers to the degree of responsiveness of quantity demanded of a commodity to change in price of other related goods. Unlike income elasticity and price elasticity, here, it is quite different. Here, quantity demanded for a commodity is 
affected by the price of other commodity. For example, here the price or uh, quantity demanded for tea will be affected by the price of coffee. So, mathematically, EPXY, now how much demand for commodity X will change because of change in price of the Y commodity is shown as EPXY equals to percentage change in quantity demanded of X divided by the change in price of Y goods. That means, here we can change it. Percentage change in quantity demanded of T due to change in the price of a coffee. So, uh, change in quantity of X divided by initial uh, demand for X divided by change in price of Y and the price of Y divided by initial price of Y. So, mathematically E P equals to change in quantity demanded for X commodity divided by change in the price of Y commodity multiplied by initial price divided by quantity initial quantity. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we will be focusing more on the price elasticity of demand. So, we will be looking at the classification of price elasticity based on the numerical values. Okay. So, price elasticity is shown by different numerical values. So, let us learn this one. First one is known as perfectly inelastic demand. Here, the key word is inelastic, perfectly inelastic. That means, your demand will not change. That is why your EP price elasticity will be equivalent to 0. So, under what circumstances you will get price elasticity of demand as 0? When the commodity demanded for a uh, quantity demanded for a commodity does not at all respond to change in its price, it is called perfectly inelastic demand and the value of the elasticity will be 0. With the help of a diagram, now here, when you draw a demand uh, uh, diagram in economics, make sure you label all clearly. So, here on y axis you have price of a commodity, on x axis you have quantity demanded for a commodity. So, now in terms of perfectly inelastic, you will have a demand curve which is parallel to y axis. And let us say O p is your initial quantity and O q is your, uh, O p is your initial price and O q is initial quantity. Now, let us say the price of commodity increases uh, to O p 1. That means now price changed, but demand for a commodity has remained same. So, mathematically E p equals to price elasticity of demand according to this diagram is equal to percentage change in percentage change in quantity divided by percentage change in price of a commodity. Let us say price increased by 10 percent, but demand remained same, no change. That means change in quantity demanded is 0 divided by change in price of a commodity is 10, which means any number divided by 0 is equal to 0. That is why E p equals to 0. When E p is equal to 0, it is perfectly, perfectly inelastic, inelastic demand. perfectly inelastic demand. That means, no matter 
whether the price increases or decreases, quantity demanded will not change. Now, second one is perfectly elastic. Now, this is to totally opposite to what we have learned here. Perfectly elastic demand. The demand is said to be perfectly elastic. If a small change in price of a commodity leads to infinite change in quantity demanded. And here, fall in the price will lead to infinite increase in demand. Diagrammatically, you can explain with this diagram. Now, here, in perfectly inelastic uh, demand, we have a demand curve parallel to y axis. Now, in perfectly uh, elastic demand, we have demand curve which is parallel to x axis. Now, here the price will not change. Let us say price is OP, but quantity demanded increases from OQ to OQ1. As I mentioned earlier, only the fall in the price of a commodity will lead to infinite change in the price of a, a, a quantity demanded for a commodity. So now here, price above OP, there will be no demand, no change in demand. At price OP, any quantity of commodity can be demanded and price below. Now, if the price decreases, then there will be infinite change in quantity demanded, infinite change in quantity demanded. Let us say now, here EP, price elasticity of demand is percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price of a commodity. Let us say now price has not changed and your quantity has changed at OP, quantity demanded changed by 10 percentage. So now change in price, e, uh, change in quantity demanded is 10 percent and the change in the price of commodity is 0. Any number which is divided by 0, you will get infinity. So, when your EP is equal to infinity, then it shows that it is perfectly elastic demand. Small change in price will lead to large change in the price of a commodity. And third, we have unitary elastic demand, unitary elastic demand. So now, when we will get unitary elastic demand, unitary, mathematically it means one. So now, when proportionate change in quantity demanded of a commodity is equivalent to the change in the price of a commodity, your elasticity of demand will be equivalent to one. So, with the help of diagram now here. So now here, now let's say you have a demand curve here and you have initial price at OP and OQ. Now price decreased from OP to OP, OP1, which increased quantity demanded to OQ1 from OQ. Because of 10 percent decrease in the, uh, the price of a commodity, there is 10 percent increase in the price uh, quantity for a commodity. So, EP equals to percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in the price of commodity. 10 percent change in 
quantity demanded because of 10% change in the price of a commodity. So, you will get equal to 1. So, when your EP is equal to 1, your elasticity is unitary elastic demand. Now, the fourth one is relatively elastic demand. So, now demand is said to be uh, price elastic or relatively elastic when the percentage change in quantity demanded for a commodity is greater than the percentage change in its price. The elasticity value will be greater than 1 and the demand curve will be much flatter. That you have to know here. So, with the help of a diagram, okay, in relatively elastic demand, demand curve will be flatter. So, when you have a flatter demand curve, let us say OP is your initial price and OQ is your initial quantity. Now, price decreases from OP to OP1, which lead to, leads to increase in quantity demanded from OQ to OQ1. Because of 10% change in price of a commodity, because of 10% decrease in the price of the commodity, it has led to 20% increase in the price of a commodity. Uh, uh, increase in the quantity of a uh, quantity demanded for a commodity. E P equals to percentage change in quantity divided by percentage change in price of a commodity. So, percentage change in quantity demanded is 20 percent, percentage change in price of a commodity is only 10 percent. So, you have here E P is equal to E P is equal to 2 or E P is greater than 1. So, now when you have a condition where your elasticity of demand is greater than 1, then your demand is relatively elastic demand. Now, the last one is relatively inelastic demand. So now, here in this case of inelastic demand or relatively inelastic demand, percentage change in quantity demanded is less than the percentage change in price. Thus, elasticity value will be less than 1 and demand curve will be steeper. So now, here in this case, the demand curve will be more steeper that you have to keep in mind. So, now let OP be the initial price of a commodity, OQ be the initial quantity for a commodity. So, now let us say quant uh, price of a commodity increased uh, from OP to OP, OP uh, 1, which has led to decrease in quantity demanded from OQ to OQ 1. 10 percent increase in the price of a commodity has led to only 5 percent change in demand. That means, increase 10 percent increase in price led to 5 percent decrease in quantity demanded. So, elasticity of demand, price elasticity demand change in quantity divided by change in uh, percentage change in price. So, we have here change in the quantity is only 5 percent and you have 10 percent change in uh, price of a commodity, 5.5, 5 to the 10 which is equal to 0 0.5. If your EP is less than 1, it means the demand is relatively inelastic. So, now if you try to recollect all the diagram, now we have a demand curve, price, quantity. Okay. At this point, you have E P is equal to zero. Your quantity is not changing. Then you have E P 
P equals to infinity. Small decrease in price of commodity will lead to large uh, increase or decrease in the in, uh, quantity demanded, large change in quantity demanded. If you have this diagram, it shows EP equals to 1, which means change in price is equivalent to change in quantity, and you will get slope of a curve equivalent to 1. Now, if you have flatter demand curve, flatter demand curve, you will get EP greater than 1, which means relatively elastic. If you have a steeper demand curve, you will get EP less than 1, relatively inelastic. So, with the help of a diagram, you should be knowing what is the elasticity of demand. Now, we have one quiz. All other factors remaining constant, if percentage change in quantity is equal to percentage change in price, then degree of elasticity will be A, elastic demand, B, inelastic demand, C, unitary elastic demand, D, perfectly elastic demand. What could be the answer? So you have here unitary elastic demand because change in price and quantity is equal. Second one is proportionate change in price of a commodity is more than proportionate change in quantity demanded. The correct value of elasticity will be EP equals to 1, EP equals to 0, EP is greater than 1, EP is less than 1. What could be the answer? So we have answer here, it is less than 1. Now let us recollect what we have learned. So now in this lesson you have learned what is elasticity of demand. What are the different types of elasticity of demand? That is, what is price elasticity of demand? What is income elasticity of demand? What is cross elasticity of demand? Then we have also focused more on the price elasticity of demand and numerical values for the price elasticity of demand. And we have, with the help of our diagram, we have explained five different degrees of elasticity of demand. They are perfectly inelastic when EP equals to zero. Perfectly elastic if the EP is equivalent to infinity. Relatively inelastic if your EP is less than one. Relatively elastic if EP is greater than one. And unitary elastic if your EP value is equivalent to one. So now I am done with my part and this is your part. Explain why salt is considered as perfectly inelastic goods. And if you were only shopkeeper in your village, how will you use the concept of price elasticity of demand to determine the price of a commodity? Which means if you are monopoly, how you will use the knowledge of price elasticity of demand to determine the price of a commodity? So with this, thank you very much. Stay safe at home, do read books, and meet you in the next lesson. Thank you.